What is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers? Ever since the double stack macro video, you guys have been asking to see more stuff out of my personal collection. Now I usually don't show that kind of stuff off on the channel, but I'll make an exception this time because it's cool. This is the Sega 12, or the Sega 12, depending on how much you want to LARP as a Russian. So if you haven't figured it out already, the Sega 12 is an AK pattern shotgun chambered in 12 gauge. And it's kind of the shit. This one here I've had for a while. Um, I actually stole some parts off of it for the V1 AK-50, but I just recently put a converted trigger guard back on it, riveted that thing on. I wanted to do this video now because a lot of you guys have been asking to see a 12 gauge AK, and I don't know if you guys know if the Sega 12 exists or not. If you don't, you should, because it's awesome. But I've also decided I'm gonna do some cool stuff to it. I'll talk about the upgrades I wanna do later, but I wanted to show you guys just, oh my God, a bug kamikaze me right in the middle of that take. Right in my fucking eyeball. <laughs> Magazine's very convenient for storage. <laughs> Quick deploy. Anyhow, we'll talk more about what I'm gonna do to this thing later. But first, what if you wanted to buy a Sega 12? But it's the apocalypse. The US dollar is worthless. More worthless. Bitcoin is also worthless because you have no electricity. But fear not, for you invested in Acre Gold. Acre Gold is a gold subscription service. You can subscribe for 30 or $50 per month when you bank enough for a 2.5 gram bar, they send it right to your door. You can always change your plan or cancel, but why would you? You turn a little paper money into some precious metals. I've added gold to my portfolio of brass, lead, and of course, steel. So check them out using my link in the description and let's get back to the range. Let's get some! So let's calm things down a little bit. This to a core is just an AK that is a uh, shotgun. There's a little bit more to it than that, but very, very much AK. In fact, Saiga, uh, the Saigas are made in a factory called, and I know I'm gonna butcher these Russian words, but Ismash, which is now, I think, joined with Izvesk, which were the original, they were original AK plants in Russia that manufactured AKs, and now they are Kalashnikov Concern. I think the Russian government got involved and turned both factories into uh, one conglomerate. But you don't care about that. You wanna see shit get blown up. We're gonna do that. But first, let's look at these guts. So one of the things that is kind of cool and unique about the Sega 12, uh, you take the dust cover off, and uh, well, that's not unique. You take the dust cover off on any AK disassembly. But what's neat about the Sega 12 is that the recoil spring here has a little bit of dust cover on it, and it's not self-captured on the end uh, with the recoil spring assembly cap, I guess you'd call it, like uh, other AKs are. This is just two separate springs. This piece in the middle is the dust cover, or a little piece of the dust cover. It actually moves, you can see, when firing. I would guess to give it extra clearance uh, for ejection because the 12 gauge, a fire 12 gauge shell is kind of a monster if you're trying to get that thing out of the chamber. It's, it's pretty big. It needs a lot of clearance space, just like your mother. Because the bolt and carrier assembly here is pretty rad, so, Again, very much AK. It's kind of a shallow cam groove, but uh, it's pretty neat. You have a cutaway up top there for where the recoil spring sits. Uh, kind of a shorter gas piston, but interestingly, you actually have a cutaway on the side of the piston here. Uh, the reason for that, I'm sure, is just ejection uh, clearance, because like I said, the, the shotgun shells that we're ejecting here, I'll pick one up off the ground real quick. The shells that we're ejecting are pretty large when you compare it to how hard is it gonna be to find 7.62 brass. And look, I found one. That is a very significant difference as far as how much uh, space you need to have them leave the chamber and leave and eject through the side of the gun. One of the things that I believe on the Sega 12, the reason they made this design decision, instead of having a top rail, they just have the smaller rail on the bottom. Instead of having an upper and lower rail, they just have one and it just sits in that groove and it's slightly below the surface. And that's so I guess they could do cutaways like this without having to jeopardize the bolt carrier staying in the receiver. And the ejector, it's still a shark fin style ejector, kind of. I mean, it's just a, it's a little you know, manual ejector. It's not a plunger spring or anything like that. It just 
little piece of metal here that kicks the back of the casing and tosses it up out the side. And so that's why you have that cutaway on the bottom and the dust cover also has a pretty good cutaway as well. This kind of sits there when the gun is operating, but of course when it, when it shoots, when the gun's cycling, uh, this tracks into the dust cover so you have all this space so that a shotgun shell can fit through the side. The front trunnion on the Saiga 12 kind of has that appearance of the Type 1 AK, which I always thought was kind of cool. Just another little design thing there. Other than that, it's a very AK design. Fire control groups, very, it's, it's an AK. Uh, it's selectors, an AK. I mean, this thing, like I said, Ivan, let's make AK shoot shotgun bullet. And that's how you got Saiga 12. Also have an adjustable gas system, which is okay. Spring-loading firing pin and kind of a funky looking bolt compared to a standard AK, but at the same time, and you just have your extractor there and of course your clearance for where the ejector goes but it's very much still just an AK it cam uh, your bolt cam there goes back forward put that back in the recoil spring back in kind of have to make sure that that's not jammed against the back of the bolt carrier there Get this little tab in, push this down, it's tight, and you have that little button there when you're disassembling that, you know, stops this from disassembling itself. As for sights, you have traditional shotgun bead sights. You got a little rear sight here. You do not have an adjustable sight, kind of like the AK, because let's face it, it's a fucking shotgun. And you have your bead sight up front. Originally, these came sporterized, so the trigger group was moved to the rear, and they had that weird just compliance stock, so it was a sporter gun, so it could be imported in the country. But of course, any reasonable American unfucks this thing immediately, so you can put a standard pistol grip and a standard AK stock back on it. Hence these little holes here where the conversion was. I don't know, what, what else do you want from me? Let's shoot this thing. I was always told that variety is the spice of life potentially why I have an issue to this day with monogamy. But aside from that, I've also brought a variety of shotgun shells to test today. I have what we've been using today, which is double aunt buck. I have a solid slug, it's a solid projectile, and I have flechettes. Now the flechette is lower brass, it's more of like a, a softer shooting target load, but it's also, if you don't know what a flechette is, it's full of fucking nails, with little fins on them to make them fly better and hurt worse. But what are we gonna be shooting these things at? Well, I'm glad you asked, because today we are going to be continuing to fight the war on obesity, and we have three full sugar, two liters of name brand soda, because we big ballers like that. I think we're gonna start the natural progression, as one does, double lot buck, then the slug, then the flechettes, just to kind of compare what the damage is like. And mostly for filler, because we need the watch time. First up. Buckshot. Surprisingly dry considering I was directly in the splash zone. Next up, slug. Bitch went airborne. Next up, flechettes. And I don't expect this to cycle because it's a little lower power, but it should still be fun. Yeah, just like I said, did not cycle. Let's go through these in order. So skip that one, because I want to see that one. It's going to look cool. This was where the buckshot landed. So you can see here, I think that was the entry hole. And that is somehow looks kind of dirty. So the one we shot with the slug landed all the hell. All the hell, what the fuck? So the one we shot with the slug landed all the way over here. As you can see, this is no longer a very good receptacle for holding soda or any other liquid as it is completely butt fucked. Now we have our orange crush. This here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So 
That's what I was kind of hoping for. I was hoping, ah, oh, there's two of them. That's rad. Let me check this out. There's two flechettes you could still see that are stuck in the bottle from the other side. So they went in this side and it doesn't look like, I don't know. I don't think any of, oh, a couple of them penetrated. Yeah, a couple of them went straight through, but there are two that are still stuck in, which is really neat. That's actually a cool test for me. I was curious about this. I was curious if they would stabilize mid-flight, which it looks like they did. That right there would, um, I'm trying to think of what the medical term is, uh, fuck you up. Aside from the potential endorsement of war crimes, this video actually turned out pretty fun. Next time you guys see this thing, hopefully when I've done what I want to to it, uh, we're gonna convert this thing into a machine gun. She's gonna be rock and rolled. Gonna cut this barrel down a little bit, maybe put a J-Mac uh, 12 gauge brake on it, a nice little hefty brake to uh, reduce some of that recoil. It's actually really not bad. It's not as bad as I remember. Oh yeah, and we wanna add a uh, 12 gauge uh, drum too. I think that would be pretty nifty. Maybe one of those like little chainsaw attachments and just water the Chechens. I can't say that, can I? So if you guys have any ideas for what you want to see us do with this Sega 12, let me know in the comments. I still haven't made up my mind on everything yet, but other than that, it's a fun video. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead, please subscribe and hit the bell notification. It does help us out a lot in the analytics. Uh, channels like ours, we have to fight <laughs> tooth and nail to keep our analytics up and keep growing. So it really does help. I appreciate it, guys. Feel free to join in the hashtag AKG Notification Squad, and I will see you sexy, YouTube motherfuckers the next video thanks Fuel is my obsession to make the perfect weapon like us put his rise to the top but I can't let you can stop 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 here at the AK guy we believe in not littering but instead giving habitats to the local wildlife unfortunately around here the local wildlife is fucking spiders what is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers Ever since the double stack Makarov or the Stackarov video, you guys have been asking for more stuff out of my personal collection. <laughs> not asking for the, my stuff. You want to see it, not, well, you probably want it to, but get good. If you wanted to buy an AK-12, uh, not an AK-12, let me see. Like, back that up a little bit. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag? The bulk carrier group is kind of, oh, what the fuck's going on here? Why you do that? So I was always told that variety is the spice of life. Which potentially why I have an issue with monogamy. <laughs> uh, let me do that again with a straight face. Um, if you've got, if you've got the, God, what the fuck is wrong with me today? But if you guys have any ideas for you, <sighs> so if you guys have any idea for what you guys want to see us do with this 12, yeah, just do that again. I'm having a hard time with that one. So if you've.